Hi everyone. So we continue with our lecture series on uh, pathways or tracks. So we had started uh, discussing the ascending pathway. So I'll go straight away to the tracks that are located on the dorsal column. So we say that from the median ventral, uh, sorry, the dorsal median sulcus, we have fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus um, cuneatus. So that is gracilis and cuneatus. And we say they carry proprioception and discriminatory touch from the ipsilateral, same side of the body. Ipsilateral means same side. So these fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus contain axons of primary afferent neurons. So these are the first order neurons that enter the spinal cord through the dorsal root of spinal nerves. Fasciculus gracilis uh, carries information from sacral, lumbar, and lower six thoracic region. So below T6, proprioception and discriminatory touch is carried by fasciculus gracilis. And above T6 and cervical levels, that is carried by fasciculus cuneatus. So the fibers usually ascend and terminate upon a second order neuron that is located in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus in the medulla oblongata. Then the axons of second order neurons immediately decassate at the medulla. After synapsing with first order neuron, immediately decassate in the medulla as internal acute fibers, then ascend through the brainstem. So from the medulla to the pons to the midbrain. And within pons and midbrain, this tract is called the medial lemniscus. And it will terminate at the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus on a third order neuron that will later on project to the somatosensory cortex forming thalamocortical fibers. So look at the diagram on your right. So we begin, um, you can see the red, that's a first order neuron. Okay, so we had sensory information that entered from the dorsal root ganglion to the dorsal bone, then, uh, sorry, to the, entered through the dorsal bone to the dorsal column, then ascend through the spinal cord to the nucleus gracilis or cuneatus, depending on where that information came from. And then from there, it synapses with a neuron at the uh, nucleus gracilis or cuneatus. And after synapsing with a second order neuron, immediately the second order neuron will cross the midline. So from the left to the right, look at that, synapsed and crossed before ascending. So second order neuron is from nucleus gracilis or cuneatus at the medulla, immediately decassate and ascend to the ventral posterior nucleus at the thalamus. And there it will synapse with third order neuron and that third order neuron will ascend to the somatosensory cortex of the um, cerebrum. So that is the medial lemniscal pathway. So from the medulla, it will ascend through the pons to the, and the midbrain as medial lemniscus. And then from there, we get to the thalamus and then to the uh, synapse with third order neuron that will take you to the primary somatosensory cortex. So again, that just describes the, the um, lemniscal pathway, okay? So look at the diagram. So we start sensory through dorsal bone, uh, the dorsal bone, cell body in the dorsal bone enters, uh, the dorsal root ganglion enters the dorsal bone, ascends ipsilaterally at the fasciculus gracilis if it's coming below T6 and fasciculus cuneatus if it's coming from above T6. So this is proprioception and discriminatory touch. When it gets to the medulla oblongata, it will synapse with second order neuron at the nucleus gracilis or nucleus cuneatus and immediately decasset, then go up as medial lemniscus through the pons and the midbrain up to the thalamus, where in the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus, it will synapse with third order neuron that will project to the primary somatosensory cortex or the cerebral cortex. So when we ask you to describe the medial lemniscal pathway, I need to see you write in detail about first order neuron, mm -hmm. second order neuron, and third order neuron. Cell body of first order neuron is within the dorsal root ganglia. Cell body of second order neuron is within the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus of the medulla. And the cell body of the third order neuron is at the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus. So you need to give me that detail. We then discuss spinothalamic tract. We see there too. Lateral spinothalamic is for pain and temperature sensation, while the 
anterior spinothalamus is for non-discriminatory touch and pressure. So in the brainstem, the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts form the spinal components of the spinal lemniscus. And usually, information is sent to the opposite somatosensory cortex. So even in this spinothalamic tract, there is decussation. So in this diagram here, the lateral spinothalamic tract is here. So lateral and the anterior spinothalamic tract. Okay. So again, let's discuss this pathway. We need we again have three um, neurons. So lateral spinothalamic is for pain and temperature. We have seen first order neuron cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion, and it will terminate in the dorsal bone. Remember the medial lemnisco pathway. The first order neuron was terminating at the medulla, at the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. This one, it's terminating at the dorsal bone. Okay. Then second order neuron will begin at that region, nucleus propress, then immediately decussate at that level of the spinal cord, then uh, passes through anterior white commissure. This is the gray matter anterior to the um, central canal of spinal cord. Then it will ascend upwards. Okay. Then it will terminate on third order neuron in the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus. So that is where crude pain and temperature sensations are usually appreciated and emotional reactions are initiated. Remember we said the function of the um, thal it has a role in its connection with hypothalamus will control also the emotions. So thalamic nuclei usually project to the primary somatosensory cortex. So look at the diagram on your right. That's a primary, the first order neuron. Its cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion and it will terminate on the dorsal horn. So it's carrying pain and temperature information. It will relay on a second order neuron. So the cell body of second order neuron is in the dorsal horn. And immediately, second order will decussate by passing in the anterior white commissure. That's the gray matter anterior to the central canal of spinal cord. Then ascend as lateral spinothalamic to the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus. Then it will relay on a third order neuron whose cell bodies in the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus and this carries information to the primary somatosensory cortex of the cerebrum. So first order neuron cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion. It will terminate at the dorsal bone by relaying on the cell body of the second order neuron. Second order neuron will cross or decussate at the anterior white commissure then ascend as lateral spinothalamic which will terminate on the ventral posterior nuclear of the thalamus. And from there, it will project onto the uh, primary somatosensory uh, cortex. So remember, from the spinal cord, it, um, after decussation of second order neuron, it will ascend as lateral spinothalamic tract in the spinal cord. Within the brainstem, at the medulla, pons, and midbrain, this lateral spinothalamic tract is together with other tracts, and they're called the spinal lemniscus. So that's where you'll find it. Then at the thalamus, you the project at the ventral posterior nucleus to the third order that will project to the primary somatosensory cortex. Anterior spinal thalamic tract carries non discriminatory or crude touch and pressure information, and first order neuron again terminates at the dorsal bone. The second order neuron may ascend several segments before crossing via the ventral commission. So if the information is at T1, it will relay a dorsal bone at T1, but second order neuron may ascend to T2 or T3 before decussating at the ventral white commission. Then third order neuron uh, is cell body is at the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus and relay at the primary somatosensory cortex. So the information carried by anterior spinothalamic is crude touch and pressure while lateral was pain and temperature. But first order neuron, both of them will terminate at dorsal horn. Second order neuron in anterior spinothalamic may ascend before crossing, but both anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts cross at the anterior ventral commissure. Then they, uh, it will ascend on the anterior column of the spinal cord while the lateral spinothalamic tract was ascending within the lateral column of the white matter of the spinal cord. Both relay at the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus and both project onto the uh, third order neural project onto the somatosensory cortex. Look at that.
So look at the picture on the right. That's a first order neuron. Cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion. It will terminate at the dorsal cone by relaying onto a cell body of the second order neuron. And then that will ascend a few levels and decussate at the anterior commission, then ascend within the anterior column of the spinal cord as anterior spinothalamic tract. But within the midbrain and the pons, anterior spinothalamic and lateral spinothalamic together form the spinal lemniscus. Then at the thalamus, it will relay onto the posterior, uh, ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus, and the cell body of third order neuron is located in that nucleus, and that the third order neuron will project on the primary somatosensory cortex. Okay. So then we have spinocerebellar for muscle and joint sense. It has two neurons and we have two tracks, the anterior and posterior. These are usually located on the anterolateral and posterolateral aspect of the, of the white matter of the spinal cord. So this is the anterior spinocerebellar, that's the posterior spinocerebellar. And they contain axons of second order neurons. So these carry information from muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs and tactile receptors to the cerebellum. They are able to control posture and coordination of movement. Okay. So posterior spinocerebellar uh, uh, tracts, the cell bodies of second order neurons lie in the Clark's column and that's only present at the spinal cord above L3. The second order neurons will terminate ipsilaterally in the cerebellar cortex via inferior cerebellar pedicle. These tracts carry information from muscle spindles, tendon uh, organs and joint receptors of the trunk and lower limb. So look at the diagram on your right, that's a first order neuron. In red, look at it. Cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion, then it conveys on the dorsal horn. Then, second order neuron, you can see, ascends ipsilaterally. So, there's no decussation. So, it will ascend ipsilaterally as the posterior spinal cerebellar tract. So, that is on the posterior lateral aspect of white matter of the spinal cord. And then it will terminate on the ipsilateral cerebellar cortex, cerebellar cortex of the same side through the inferior cerebellar pedicle. Remember we said inferior cerebellar pedicle helps communicate the medulla to the cerebellum. So that is the posterior spinocerebellar tract. While the ventral spinocerebellar tract, the cell bodies of the second order neurons lie in the dorsal bone and these cross and ascend to midbrain. And then from the midbrain, how does midbrain communicate with the cerebellum? Through the superior cerebellar pedicle. So fibers will cross the midline for the second time within the cerebellum before terminating in the cerebellar cortex. So both spinocerebellar tracts convey to ipsilateral cerebellum. Okay, remember this ventral spinocerebellar, there is crossing that occurs before ascending and then it will cross back. So it will convey back to the cerebellum of the same side. So again, information from muscle spindles, tendon organs, joint receptors of trunk and upper and lower limb. So look at the diagram on your right. First order neuron cell body in the dorsal root ganglion relay onto the dorsal horn. Then second order neuron will cross the midline. Okay. Then ascend as anterior spinocerebellar. So that's a fast crossing. Okay. Then uh, after it has um, um, after the decussation, it ascends as anterior spinocerebellar tract. Then what happens? There is a second decussation that occurs, okay, before they terminate on the ipsilateral, or rather the cerebellar cortex from the same side where the information came from, okay. So second order neuron will cross and ascend to the midbrain, then through the superior cerebellar peduncle, from the midbrain through the superior cerebellar peduncle, fibers will then cross, okay, before terminating onto the ipsilateral cerebellar cortex. Other ascending pathways include cuneal cerebellar tract that carry information from muscle joint to cerebellum, spinotectal tract that carry from the tectum, so spinovisual reflexes that uh, bring about movements of eye and head, spinoreticular that regulate levels of consciousness, and spinal livery from cutaneous and proprioceptive organs of the cerebellum. So I'll stop here with the ascending pathway. The next lecture, we now discuss the descending pathways. Thank you very much.